Welcome to seminar two for the afternoon. So delighted to welcome online Steve Mathers, um, a geologist by profession, worked in both the UK and abroad for almost 40 years with the British Geological Society, which is based just down the road in Keyworth. Steve retired, lucky thing, in 2015 and became a director and a trustee of Nature Spot, the citizen science nature recording organisation in Leicestershire. In 2021, Steve took over as the county recorder for the butterflies in Nottingham. He recently published a report, The Status and Recorded History of Nottinghamshire's Butterflies, 1850 to 2023, which he will be discussing in this seminar. So I'm absolutely to, delighted to hand over to Steve, who's going to take us through the presentation. At the end, we'll have a few minutes for question and answer. And because Steve's online, I'm going to come out to get the questions from you, but I will then repeat them because the microphone isn't brilliant in here. And what he's asked um, for is, can we have your, your just know who, to know who he's talking to, but also which organisation or who you're linked with. And I'll try and remember it between getting to you and back to the, back to the front. So, Steve, over to you. OK, Cassie, thanks for the introduction. Um, Hello to anyone in the audience who already knows me. For those that don't, yeah, I'm Steve Mathers, the County Butterfly Recorder for Knots. I've been doing this job uh, since 2021, so I'm starting my fourth season as the recorder. But I've recently published uh, a report, which is over here on the left of the screen, the status and recorded history of Nottinghamshire's butterflies. Um, and it's that which I'm going to talk to you about this afternoon. I'm not trying to sell you anything. This is a free publication and I hope you'll all want a copy by the time I've finished. So why have I done this? Well, when I took over as county recorder, I wanted to understand the context in which I was working because I was being asked for data and advice from people and I really had to mug up very quickly on what had gone before. What I've produced is the first systematic account for over a century. And there have been considerable introductions, reintroductions, releases of butterflies in Nottinghamshire. And that aspect of things has never been properly documented. I also wanted to provide a one stop shop for the many inquiries I get from students, academics, local nature organizations. Um, so all the information that I hold has been summarized in this document and is easily accessible for everybody. But most of all, I wanted to do it as a thank you to all the brilliant recorders in Knots that I've met since I took on the job. So over time, we have about a third of a million records for butterflies in knots. That's an immense amount. And we're adding to that by about, well, 30,000 a year now. 2023, we had over 30,000 records. Um, prior to 1995, though, the recording of butterflies in the county is rather limited. Uh, so older records are like gold dust. And finding out what was going on in the county in butterflies much before then is really, a, you know, it's a detective job. So the, the top graph shows the um, cumulative number of uh, records, sorry, the, uh, the number of records for each five year period um, since 1995. And you can see that the number of records are growing almost exponentially. Since 1995, though, the annual to total of records that we've had in do, even in that period, vary by an order of magnitude. Now, over time, the major, the first major work uh, on the butterflies in Nottinghamshire was published by a guy called Bramold, who lived in the Mansfield area. And for 20 years, he recorded the butterflies of what we can broadly call Sherwood Forest, and they produced a list of the species present. And that's the first really substantive piece of work on the butterflies of the county. There was then a series of compilations published by this guy here, John Wesley Carr, who was a professor at the university and also the director 
of the Natural History Museum at Wollerton, which he largely founded and developed. Now, those three compilations of his in 1906, 1916, the big piece of work, and a supplement in 1935, although we call them Carr's publications, they really were a synopsis of a group of people who were working in the county, and he is very much the figurehead or the nominate person for those reports. The other useful piece of information that's about is the website of Ekring Birds, where in 2017, Trevor and Dillis Pendleton wrote a historical review and produced an atlas of recent records of the county's butterflies. Over time, there's been various distinguishing recorders in knots. Back in Victorian and Edwardian times, it was mainly the clergy, landed gentry, the lady in this uh, wedding photograph from the Daily Telegraph from 1911, the lady called Evelyn Alderson. She grew up in Worksop. She married an industrialist, Sir John Robbins, who lived at Worksop Manor, and she was a very keen butterfly recorder. Coming to more modern times, Rear Admiral Tallis, shown in the uh, upper right photograph, is here looking at the first British nuclear test off the coast of northwest Australia. Uh, yes, northwest Australia, um, just after the Second World War. And he used to come up to Nottinghamshire occasionally to visit his daughter, who was living in the area, and when he was here, he provided some butterfly records. So it's quite interesting when you look through our recorders and you see Fred Loggs, Joe Smith, Rear Admiral Tallis. It rather stands out. He was a very key butterfly recorder down where he lived in Hampshire. And no mention of distinguished recorders would be complete without a mention of Bill, our very own Bill Bacon. Bill has been recording butterflies in Bingham and around that area since before I was born. So since 1950, Bill has been recording butterflies around Bingham. He has, of course, had a job and moved away from the area at times during that period, but he's, uh, his, re his record stretched from 1950 to 2024. Now, I've already explained that we get very varied numbers of records year on year in the county. Uh, so it's it's very important if we want to judge how a species is doing, whether it's increasing or declining or maintaining an even par, that we normalise the amount of records coming in. We need to compare apples with apples, not apples with bananas, pears and pineapples. And we can only apply a, an approach like this to the post 1995 data, where there are at least a reasonable number of records each year. So normalizing the data will be inappropriate, though, in some cases. And I think, in particular, species that partway through this time span suddenly became part of an initiative to record them in more detail. But for those species that we can normalize the data reasonably, what normalization means is basically going to boost or reduce the amount of records each year so it comes to a common even level. And then we can compare how the species are performing across time. So let's have a look here at the small heath butterfly. If we look at the upper graph, uh, the numbers over time would appear to show an increase, especially in recent years. But as we've already seen, we're getting more and more records. So that probably isn't a real picture. But if we normalize the data and move to the uh, graph below, the, the, the number of records is still in the orange brown color. But here are the normalized total in blue. And you can see that rather than representing a recent increase in abundance of small heath, it appears that it's gone through a sort of maximum development between about 2005 and 2013, and it's tailed off somewhat since. 
So it's very important to normalize data and think about data when we're Another example would be the large skipper, which uh, again, the actual data is shown in orange brown. And again, there are far more records in recent years than previously. But again, if we normalize the totals and add a trend line, it suggests that the large skipper is a pretty stable population in humans. So the number of species that have occurred in the county over time um, shows an overall decline. We had a, over 40 species in about 1875. We now regularly record 32 species in the county most years. This isn't a simple decline because between 1930 and 1990, we really don't have too many records. It really is, you know, in terms of the data, it's something of a dark ages in terms of history. So I would say that those lows are artificially low for that very reason. And what I think we've seen is a gradual decline of numbers of species over time. So what have we lost? Well, here's four very nice butterflies over on the left that we've definitely lost from the county. The checkered skipper, the grayling, the silver studded blue, and the large tortoiseshell. Now, I say we've lost these species. It's not that we've done anything wrong in knots. All those losses are part of nationally recognized trends. Two other species that we probably had and certainly don't have any longer as shown on the right this is the black veined white the large copper and we don't have any records of the large copper from the county but what we do know is that at Gainsborough in Lincolnshire there was a colony right on the bank of the river Trent and the county boundary is in the middle of the river so it's only 50 meters from where this colony of large copper used to exist in Gainsborough. So I think it's perfectly reasonable to suggest that with uh, reed beds and sedge and envir marshy environments on both sides of the river, it almost certainly was present in knots at the same at the same time. And similarly with the black vein white, that was also had an established population in Gainsborough. It's a pretty active a strong flying butterfly, and it would surprise me if it didn't at times come over and breed in knots. What have we lost? Number two, the fritillaries. In the 1890s, you could wander about in Sherwood and see five large fritillary species. The three shown on the left, plus the dark green and the silver wash fritillary. Now, all these species use violets as their larval host plant. Uh, the violets tend to occur in wood, woodland clearings and heath, often with bracken. And what seems to have happening, happened is the coppicing of the woodland stopped, and the heathland has been progressively lost to agriculture and forestry. Also, myxomatosis. Uh, has reduced the rabbit population, which probably previously grazed heavily on the grass and allowed the violets to flourish uh, in the uh, sward in these clearings. So we've lost the high brown, the small pearl bordered and the pearl bordered. Most of the current fritillaries in the county are the result of introductions. The marsh fritillary shown at bottom right may also have been locally present in North Knots in the 19th century. The most recent departure from the county butterfly list of sorts was the wall or the wall brown as some people call it. And I've showed the distribution maps five distinct time intervals over here on the right. I'm sorry the dots are a bit indistinct on the first one. I should have chosen a stronger colour, but uh, up to 1934, wall was noted in various parts of the county, but there weren't many records uh, in those days. By 1991 to 
2005, it looks like measles. Wall is all across the county. And then suddenly it goes into a dramatic decline. If we look at the graph now over on the left, we can see the number of records tailing off to almost zero. The population then contracted and became isolated in various clusters. And the last wall was seen in Nottinghamshire in 2020 at Mistness, which is almost on the Yorkshire, South Yorkshire border here in the very extreme north of the county. Again, there's nothing we've done wrong in Knotts. This is part of a well recognised national issue. At the same time, we have thankfully gained a few species. There's three here that seem to have turned up in the 1990s. There may be the odd record earlier than that, but some of these species are not particularly easy to recognise, so that produces a degree of uncertainty. And I think in particular of the Essex skipper, which is, you know, you probably need a good photograph to uh, split it from the small skipper with common butterfly knots but we've also uh, gained the brown argus and the holly blue which uh, first started appearing in the county in the mid 1990s if we look at the graph here on top uh, top left and very quickly established a decent sized population i've normalized this trend and it seems to have tailed off a bit but now it looks as if it's behaving as a very stable population and you can see from small beginnings that it's spread throughout the county. There's also some species that used to be quite uh, common uh, in Victorian times and then suddenly either died out or in the case of the comma the comma, which we take for granted as a common knot species today. Victorians would have had a similar view of it. But in between, in the 1920s and 1930s, the comma underwent a phenomenal contraction of its British range. It was only to be found commonly in the 20s and 30s in the West Midlands, South West Midlands, and the area surrounding the seven estuaries. And we don't really know why that happened. And there are similar things going on right now with the wall brown. And we can suggest reasons, but I, I actually suggest to you, in many cases, we're not really understanding fully why these things are happening. The encouraging thing with the comma is following that mass contraction in the 20s and 30s, it's been followed by a slow recolonization. And it now spreads well up into Scotland and, you know, almost a pandemic species in the British Isles. The marble white was present historically. Reared introductions in the 1990s have seeded a new population and it is now spreading well across the county. Purple Emperor was formerly present, never in large numbers but certainly present in the 19th century and may well have been collected to extinction other than any environmental factors. There are then some anecdotal sightings of the species, especially in the Sherwood area in the 70s, 80s and 90s, but that was followed by the reintroduction of a population in 2010 and working out from that recently we've seen an expansion in the range of Purple Emperor. Turning from our breeding and resident species to migrant species, uh, two important ones are the clouded and the pale cloudy yellow. Um, these were common occurring in mixed flocks the clouded yellow was all, uh, always the dominant partner, but they occurred in big swarms of uh, yellow butterflies in Victorian times. And as I said, the cloud, the pale cloudy yellow, which is the species over here on the left, these are specimens from Woolerton Hall. And in fact, these two here were actually collected in Southall 
uh, in, I think there's a small suburb, well, suburbs perhaps a bit grand for Southall, but a northern part of Southall called Normanton. And I think these two species were actually collected there in 1879. Uh, clouded yellow, which was always the dominant partner of these large swarms of uh, migrants, still occurs in knots in most years. But the numbers are low, but they do fluctuate from year to year. We can see in the graph at bottom right that the recent good clouded yellow years 1996, 1998, 2000, 2014. Again, the actual numbers are in orange brown. Uh, sorry, the actual numbers of records are in blue here. The number of sites where the species rec were recorded are in brown. The thing you get with species like clouded yellow is you get like bird watches, it gets twitching. Everybody wants to see it, so they all go out and we get 30 records from one site. So to use the total number of records to judge the size of the influx of the cloudy yellow would be unrealistic. And I think it's much better to therefore look at the brown numbers, which are the number of sites where the species was seen. Another now very rare butterfly in knots is the Camberwell Beauty. Now this was quite a common migrant, a late summer migrant usually. Uh, they come in from Scandinavia and Northern Europe. Uh, and uh, it was much more common in the 19th century. There are a few reasonable number of modern records from Lincolnshire, but of course that includes the coastal part of the county. So that's not surprising, but further inland here in Knotts, recordings of Camberwell beauty are now extremely rare. The one photographed here uh, by my friend Chris Bradbury, I think this was an Annesley pit top in about 2013, I think it was. But the problem is that this species is very popular with people for releasing at things like funerals. Uh, so we can never be sure these days whether an isolated Camberwell beauty has actually popped over from Scandinavia or just been released out of a box. Uh, the third aspect of the migrant species over time is the, the Red Admiral and the Painted Lady. Now the Red Admiral um, is a regular migrant every year in knots, um, but Red Admiral can now be classified in Britain as a resident species. Now that doesn't mean I'm saying that all the Red Admirals we get are all resident. They, they certainly aren't. The vast majority still migrate. But certainly in Southern England, Red Admirals are now being seen in all the stages, you know, eggs, caterpillars, uh, pupa, and adults. So they are breeding happily year round in Southern England. So we now classify Red Admiral as a resident species rather than a migrant. The Painted Lady, of course, remains probably our most famous migrant. Um, and the number of records over the last 25 years are very variable. And again, as with the cloudy yellow, you can pick out some pretty enormous influxes during that period. Um, 2019 was the last big year for Painted Lady. Turning now to the bag, um, the species that are prioritised by the bag group include the grizzle skipper. Um, the, di the distribution, if we look for the earlier time shot here, was you know, fairly well developed across the county. Uh, but in recent years, it's contracted and the distribution now is entirely south of the Trent along a series of disused and heritage railways. The massive increase in the number of records shown here in blue is mainly due to a dedicated team 
uh, monitoring and recording the butterfly. And in particular, the numbers have been augmented in the last two or three years by uh, recording the early stages as well. So this increase is not an increase in the population. It's definitely showing a strong increase in the uh, recording effort, uh, in part due to the uh, efforts of the bag group. Um, and there's a, we're right on the northern limit of grizzle skipper in Britain. Um, so it's quite important that we try and keep the species in the county. And there's a lot of work goes on on habitat management by the uh, Butterfly Conservation and Bag Partnership, which is led by Chris Jackson from Notts County Council. A second skipper that's still a bag species is the dingy skipper. And this again, we can see vast increase in the number of records and also encouragingly in brown, the number of sites where the dingy skipper has been reported. Now, the distribution would appear to indicate that in the last 10 years or so, uh, the species is more widespread. Um, so I don't think we can say that the dingy skipper is doing anything but expanding and increasing its population size. And for that reason, butterfly conservation nationally have now downgraded it uh, in their uh, in their an analysis to a species of least concern. So dingy skipper is really doing rather well. Similarly, in the county, green hair streak. Um, if we look at the graph, the number of sites in brown increasing uh, quite substantially in recent years, and the number of records in particular go going up. It does appear looking at the distribution of the records that there may have been something of a shift in the location of the populations in and around Nottingham itself in recent years. And there is a hint that uh, the species is expanding. We had a record last year uh, from our branch organizer um, in Ollerton. And there are very there are, there are no records since the Victorian times of the species in that area of Nottinghamshire. So let's hope that that is going to be uh, something that uh, will follow through and develop even further. I mentioned earlier introductions, releases, reintroductions, call them what you want. All those terms have slightly different definitions, but they all relate to man's artificial manipulation and interference with butterfly populations. Now, the only present initiative I'm aware of at the moment uh, by a wildlife organization in the county is the National Trust at Clumber Park that are interested in the possibility of reintroducing the silver study blue. That species was present in the park until the late 1920s. This is a long term effort if it's ever going to be reintroduced. Uh, it's a particularly difficult species to work with because the early stages of the species have a intricate association with ants. The black ant, Lassius niger, actually shepherds and helps manage the early stage caterpillars and pupa of the silver study blue. So you don't just need the right habitat, you need the ant populations as well. There are also a lot of introductions and releases that go on in Nottingham by small groups and individuals. And most of these happen in a rather clandestine fashion. I've never been entirely sure why that should be the case. Um, but this this activity is very, you know, is very abundant in knots. And this at times makes the job of the counter recorder rather difficult because I have got to try and separate in my analysis and acceptance of records from what is occurring naturally and what is being manipulated. I mean, just to give you one example, Last year, we had three large tortoiseshell records in the county. 
Now, that species hasn't been present in knots for about 100 years. However, it's done extremely well in recent years in France and the Low Countries, and now increasingly in southern England. So it is possible that these are the precursors of a gradual re-establishment of this species across the Midlands. So we will just have to keep an open mind and see what happens with that. It's perfectly possible that those three recorded uh, large tortoiseshell were the result of introductions, but they were all by very experienced recorders and in some cases included photographs. And I have no doubt what was seen were large tortoiseshells. So unexpected new evidence has just come our way as a result of a PhD by a guy called Jamie Wildman at the University of Northampton, partly supervised by staff from Butterfly Conservation Head Office. And what he did was he was studying the loss of checkered skipper from, uh, from England. There's always been a good population in Scotland, but it died out in England in 1976, I think it was. Um, and he was trying to trace uh, the decline and the demise of the species. Uh, but his approach was different to what everybody else had done before. He'd got all the established records for the species, but what he went and did is he went round all the leading British museums and owners of private collections and got all the records where checkered skipper had been caught. Now, historically, we knew that checkered skipper was present here at Wigsley Wood in this sort of mini panhandle of knots that stretches towards Lincoln, and also at Stapleford Wood, northeast of Newark, which lies astride the county boundary between Knotts and Lincolnshire. So we knew that checkered skipper, sorry, we knew that checkered skipper, these are genuine records, but the other locations were very much disputed and they were not regarded by Carr in his uh, synopses as being reliable. But now we've looked at the museum species indexes, uh, specimen indexes, we know that these appear to be genuine records. So that's added considerably to our understanding of the species in the county. And this approach, I suggest, is replicable, and it would be very nice to do a similar exercise with Purple Emperor, White Admiral and Wood White for the county. So returning finally to the publication that I started talking about, it's not a book, it's more of a report or a reference work. It gives a background for future decision making in conservation. It's only being released digitally as a PDF. And it's going to be versioned. So as more information becomes available, uh, as each year's records come in, this document can be updated and a new version released as and when that's necessary. As I stress, it's free. I want everybody to be able to have a copy of it and make use of it. Um, you can download it from either the Knots, Moths and Butterflies Facebook group, of which I'm a co-admin. You'll have to join that to get the download because it's in the file section and it's a private group. You could go to the East Midlands Butterfly Conservation website and download it, or the simplest way of getting a copy is just to send me an email at smbutterflies11 at gmail.com. I'll just leave that on the uh, screen for a few more seconds if any of you are trying to jot that email down. Thank you, Steve. But I think that's just about me done. That's super. Um